The, um, the descriptions of it can be a little bit confusing at times. So what I've tried to do is come up with, from my point of view at least, the most easy to understand uh, development of the EM algorithm. So I'm going to walk slowly through a relatively simple but detailed um, treatment or approach to the EM algorithm. Uh, I'll start by reviewing a little bit of basic probability again. Um, and then as a sort of side trip, I'll talk about how you can view maximum likelihood in a variational way. Then I'll talk about the EM algorithm, and I'll start with the, <clears throat> the ML version, which is where the famous paper begins. Uh, then I'll talk about a, <clears throat> a more, more general version. And then I'll, I'll treat a simple mixture model example. And the goal, I think, is, I, I hope, is to for you guys to be able to, if you don't already know it, understand uh, what it is and how it works. OK, so I'll start with expected value again, um, one of the fundamental constructs of probability. Um, so here's ex expected value for discrete and continuous random variables. <clears throat> uh, one minor point is that expectation is linear. Uh, so if, if you're taking the expected value of a linear function, you can interchange the function and the expected value. That comes in handy. Um, another thing that um, I've found very useful in, in various contexts is this little item about the um, relationship between sample average and expected value. I've seen people call this fundamental theorem of expectations. Other times I think of it as just the weak law of large numbers. But essentially what it says is um, if you have a sample from some distribution and you evaluate a function on the uh, elements of the sample and average those things, then asymptotically it equals the expected value of that function under the same distribution that the data came from. Um, Kale divergence. Uh, reviewing this guy again. Um, Kale divergence is a expected value of a ratio, of a log ratio, actually. So it's, Kale divergence compares two distributions. Um, this is the definition. It's the expected value under that distribution of the log of the ratio of the distributions. Um, it's pretty easy to see that if the distributions are the same, it's zero, because this is zero. It's easy to see with, pretty easy to see with Jensen's inequality that it's non-negative, <clears throat> and it's also pretty clear that it's not symmetric. But it's pretty useful. Um, so now I'll, I'll talk briefly about how you can use it to um, make a variational version of maximum likelihood. So let's say we have some data that is, comes from a data distribution PD and we want to do maximum likelihood, or, well, what we want to do is fit a distribution to that, to that distribution, the, the, di the distribution that's generating the, the data. So, so what we could do is make a choose, a, choose a parametric model, like let's say a Gaussian with um, unknown mean, perhaps, and then just evaluate the Kale divergence between the distribution the data comes from and the modeling distribution in this way. Fairly natural uh, approach. So if you do that and expand the definition of Kale, Kale divergence, you get this pair of expectations. And it turns out this one is the entropy of the data distribution. And it's not a function of theta. So we can forget that guy. Uh, and so what's left is this negative, well, arg min of this negative expected value of the model distribution under the data distribution um, log of that guy. And so then, but the thing is, if we're trying to do this uh, fitting problem, we probably don't really actually have this guy. This guy's, what we probably have is data, not the distribution. So what we could do is approximate this expected value with a sample average 
and that gets us this. And this is just the standard statement of maximum likelihood. So, so you can see that sort of asymptotically, maximum likelihood is, is the same as variational fitting of distributions. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, that's just a side trip. Um, the, the EM algorithm was made famous by this paper by Dempster, Laird, and Rubin in 77. It's pretty entertaining to read. It has the reviews attached to the back of the paper as part of the paper, essentially. It's the, what the journal did. And there was quite a lot of enthusiasm for it. I think it, I, last night when I checked, it has 45,000 citations in Google Scholar, so it's a popular one. Uh, there's a more recent treatment uh, here. Um, one of the interesting things is I think these guys point out that the convergence um, arguments in this are probably not correct, and th these guys say they have a correct version. So I think it's, it was, to me, it was kind of a revelation to realize that you can actually publish material with minor errors and you will not be struck dead, basically. Um, you can still be famous and so forth. So that was <coughs> heartwarming, I thought. Um, Okay, so what is the EM algorithm? Well, the way they start describing it is in a maximum likelihood context with missing data. So the idea is we have a, a likelihood model. We want to estimate some parameter theta of the model. And the thing that makes it a little bit strange or not the most easy thing is that we have observations of this guy, this random variable, but we don't have observations of that guy. So they call that missing data. So it's, so this initial context is essentially maximum likelihood with two types of random variables and one of them are missing. Um, otherwise it's maximum likelihood. So, so you could get at that by just um, margin, you could, you could get this guy, um, maximum likelihood for the thing we care about, well, uh, this, yeah, this is the, the natural statement of maximum likelihood given that we have observations of this data and that's all. And we could get that by marginalizing out this thing. This is just an identity. So, so you could potentially just construct this directly and optimize this over theta, but sometimes there's advantages to the EM algorithm um, Essentially, the, this might turn out to be uh, difficult to handle analytically, um, where the EM algorithm can get you something that you may have to iterate, but could be probably easy analytically. Okay, so, so the estimator, so that estimator, this one, the marginal estimator, sort of the natural maximum likelihood estimator, for the missing data problem, I'm just giving a little notation here, I'm calling it J. J of theta is just the log likelihood that we're trying to optimize over theta. Um, so what the, what the EM algorithm does is it defines a sequence of estimators, which the, the idea is that if you optimize these estimators in sequence, you'll get the right estimate. Um, so the, the sequence of, well, so there's, so this is essentially the true estimator. These guys, J, N, are approximate estimators and there's gonna be a sequence of them and it'll get used in the following fashion. I should have put theta N in there. So I have to say these are new slides from old uh, notes and there may be some errors. So uh, let me make a little note there. Um, and I'd, I'd be happy to have other bug reports on this. Um, so anyway, there's a sequence of estimators. Uh, no, this is correct. That, I'm sorry. I'm uh, still a little groggy from last night. This is actually correct. So, so this is the nth estimator j, where r max over theta, and that gives us a new version of theta. The new version of theta gets used in the construction of the next estimator. Okay, so you guys should try to stay sharp and keep me on track here because uh, I may need help. Um, okay, so then, you know, this idea of making a sequence of estimators seems a little weird, but at the end you can see 
that it all makes sense. Um, so, so this is a definition of the sequence of estimators. The nth estimator is defined to be the standard estimator that we're trying to optimize with this Kale divergence subtracted from it. And this Kale divergence is on distributions on Z, the hidden variable um, conditioned on X and theta or, or theta N. So this is, this is really the same distribution, but it has a, th a theta here and a theta N there inside this Kale divergence. And it's a little hard when, when, it, you know, when I look at this, it's not immediate why this is a good choice or makes sense, but that becomes clear as we go along. Um, what's good about it is that the, this sequence of estimators used in this way will get the, converge locally to the right estimate. So I'll, I'll try to show that. Next, also, so anyway, the, the idea is that this thing does work and it actually also collapses to a convenient form. Um, this turns out to be pretty similar to a treatment. Chris Bishop has several treatments of EM in his book. This corresponds to one of his treatments. Um, and uh, it's not quite the same because I discovered his version after I worked out my version, but, but they are quite similar. And it's a good book, too. All right, so what about this distribution on Z? Because the Kale term has this, this distribution on Z in it twice. So, so we can, so one question is, where do we get it or can we get it? And, and we can, we can just get it from identities. So, so this is just an identity here, uh, which we could verify just by writing out the definitions of conditional probability. It's pretty simple. So this is just plugging in definition. And then you can check that all the, th the right, this all cancels. So it's true that these are equal. Then that can be rearranged to give us this. It's essentially, this is really just Bayes' rule in action. So anyway, what we get is we can, given that we have this likelihood function we started with, um, we can get this distribution on Z just through identities. And it, you can write it this way or you can write it that way. But it's, it's definitely something we can construct given what we've got. Okay, so now uh, I'll try to describe why this thing works next. Um, so I'll, I'm gonna talk about some properties of this estimator, uh, the sequence of estimators. Um, so here it is just writing it out again. This is the definition of the sequence of estimators or the nth estimator. It's quite easy to see that if, if you evaluate the nth estimator on theta n, it's the same as the true estimator on theta n. The reason is if we, if we plug theta n into this thing, the Kale divergence is zero because the two things are the same. And uh, then we have a theta n here. So it's, 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 it's easy to see that at theta n, j n is the same as j, the, the true estimator that we're trying to solve. Um, it's also easy to see that the the nth estimator in the sequence is, is not greater than the true estimator just because the Kale divergence is non-negative. So uh, if, if this guy is non-negative, then this guy has to be less than that, or not greater, I guess would be the right thing to say. Um, it's not really needed, but it's, it's also pretty easy to see that um, Oh, I need a theta n here, I think. Uh, yes, definitely, I need a theta n there. Sorry. Third equation. Theta n on left in j prime. Okay. It's pretty easy to see that the derivatives are the same at theta n because at theta n, the Kale divergence is minimized, so its derivative is zero. So that means these two need to have the same derivative at that place. That's all pretty easy to see in this graph. Sorry about the LaTeX uh, symbol names here, but anyway, the idea is that this two bump curve is the true likelihood that we're trying to 
maximize, and I guess the hope would be that this bump is higher than the other bump because we're going to converge to that one. Um, so that's, that's the estimator we're trying to maximize over theta. The approximate estimator, uh, Jn, is written as, is drawn as this curve here. So this curve is, is equal to the true estimator at theta n. That was um, this statement. So, so they're equal. At theta n, Jn and J are the same. And also, um, it's less than, so it, you know, it, it can't cross over. It has to, so it has to touch, but not go over uh, the real estimator. And also, because of that, it pretty much needs to have the same slope if everything's continuous or smooth, I guess. Um, so then what the, what the optimization of the jth estimator says, um, the, the, the statement of, uh, yeah, the, the statement of the optimization, yeah, the statement is that we successively optimize this sequence of estimators. So what, what we need to do is optimize this estimator. And if we do that, if we optimize that over theta, it's going to make progress because if we're not at the maxima, um, there's some slope here, and these guys actually have the same derivative. So, so it's going to at least go uphill uh, in getting to the to the maximum of the nth estimator. So, so that's a demonstration that um, optimizing the nth estimator makes progress on estimating, on solving the true estimator, or optimizing the true estimator. Recalling that, um, uh, where'd the strategy go? Uh, this is the strategy. The strategy is repeatedly optimize over, optimize each Jn over theta, getting a new value of theta, and then building that into the, the next estimator because the, the nth estimator does incorporate theta n. It's part of it. Does this make sense? Is this holding together? Some, okay, we're in sync. Good. Okay, so now the, the slightly messy part. The, the rest of it is, is really simple verification. Um, it's, you know, there's a few steps, but it's, there's nothing to it, really. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that next. I may need help, though. Um, all right, so, so this is just the statement of optimizing the nth estimator. Um, this is expanding the definition of the nth estimator. It's the standard estimator with this weird Hale divergence term subtracted from it. That's just from the definition of a few slides ago. Um, the next thing is to, uh, well, let's see. This is the definition of the standard estimator. So this is just expanding the definition of J. That's this guy here. Um, this is opening up the KL divergence. Um, the KL divergence can be, you know, turns into this um, expected value of uh, either a ratio of things or a difference of logs. Um, so anyway, this is just plugging in the definition of KL divergence. Um, so is that working for everybody? Can you see that from where you're sitting? Some people can. Okay. All right. Uh, the next step is, um, well, it turns out this, this term here actually is not a function of theta. Th this one is and this one is, but, but that one has no theta in it. So within this sum of terms being argmaxed, we can just forget about it. It has no effect. Um, so that's leaving these two terms, that one and that one. Uh, let's see, what's the next step? Um, the next step is to use Bayes' rule in here. Uh, this turns out by identity, you can re-express this um, distribution, log distribution on Z in, yeah, in, in this way. Bayes' rule will let you get from that guy to this these two things. It's pretty easy to verify. And now we're almost there, actually, because um, this guy and this guy cancel. 
And so what's left is um, just that one, essentially. So, so this is the nth estimator. Um, and for me, um, this, this guy's the take home message. This is the one I can remember, essentially. When I try to read a paper and go, is this really the EM algorithm? If I can make it fit this, then I'm used, and I can actually remember this one, um, then I'm feeling pretty good. Um, so this, this is the EM algorithm, and it, so this construct is actually pretty much the same as the, the function Q that you'll see in the early paper and on the Wikipedia page. Um, let's see, how am I doing on time anyway? Uh, 10, 15, I think that's slide 24. Okay, good, I'm good, okay. So, so this is the statement, and, and then the EM algorithm talks about the E step and the M step, and it gets a little confusing. It'll become clear a little bit later, but at this stage of the game, the way I think about the two steps is, um, the M step is pretty clear. The M step is we optimize over theta. So there's some function here we optimize over theta, and that's easy to understand. But the question is, what is this E step? And to me, the E step is, to do this optimization over theta, we have to have our hands on this distribution, and it does depend on theta n, so we have to reconstruct or rebuild this distribution at each new iteration. You know, theta changes, theta n has changed, we need, we need a new version of this guy, so somehow we have to do some bookkeeping or reevaluations or calculations so that we actually have this updated distribution, because it's required to do the expected value of this guy, the, the uh, standard log likelihood complete data term. Yeah, so anyway, so the idea is you can start on either of these two steps and iterate until it converges, and it converges locally, sort of like gradient descent does. Um, there's a thing that's commonly called the generalized EM or GEM algorithm, and all that means is that instead of doing a complete optimization over, over um, a complete optimization over theta in the M step, you just do a partial, partial optimization, like perhaps take one step of gradient descent of a nonlinear optimization, and then just stop there and then go back and redo the E step. Turns out it can be a pretty effective strategy. If you're, if you're in a situation where the optimization over theta has to be solved with sort of general nonlinear optimization, there's really not a lot of use in running all the way to convergence because it's not gonna be the right one anyway. You just kind of need to make progress. Okay, returning to the nth estimator, the take home message. Um, it turns out fairly often that the thing that inside the expected value turns out to be linear in Z, the missing variables that we're taking expectations over. Because if you can imagine the probability is some e to the negative blah, 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 after the log, it might be that that stuff turns out to be linear. It frequently is. If that's the case, then, then life gets easier because you can bring the expectation. It's like this, this whole function winds up being linear in Z. If that is true, you can interchange the order and bring the expectation inside. It's just interchanging the order of two linear functions. And then, and then you can just give this guy a name. We can call this guy Z bar. It's just the expected value of Z. Um, so it's kind of just the average Z, but it's the nth one because it's, it's with respect to this distribution here that itself depends on N. So this is Z bar, this guy is Z bar N, or super N. So then, then, then what the thing looks like is um, in the M step, it's you know, pretty simple optimizing this uh, function. And then the E step now starts to make sense because it's actually the, the E step, which is E stands for expectation, where we really are just taking an expected value in the E step, we're calculating an expected value. So pretty often in, in applications, the, the EM algorithm will sort of collapse down to something in this style, and then, then calling it the E step and the M step is pretty uh, sensible or makes, I don't know, it just makes sense. Um, okay, so that's the, that's the story. 
And again, this is the guy I can actually remember. Um, uh, this can be made slightly more general. Um, it, pretty often we, would, we might actually, in addition to this likelihood thing, we might have a prior on theta. You know, that's pretty typical in, in estimation problems, uh, problem solving. So if that's true, then, then we actually can construct the, the complete joint distribution on those guys. And it turns out, uh, I guess the MAP estimate we, we could get the MAP estimate with this uh, iteration and not much has changed. It's just that this now has the, j the joint rather than the conditional, so it's pretty simple. Um, uh, and again, in that situation, it's, it's no problem to obtain the, the required distribution on Z. That's this distribution you can get again from, so you can, you can you know, pretty, it's pretty obvious you can get that if you have the full joint distribution. Okay, um, let's see now, where are we? Uh, 20 minutes, no wait. No, 10, 20, so slide 28. Yeah, good, okay. All right, so now I'm gonna do a really simple, probably the simplest non-trivial example, or maybe it, it may be even trivial perhaps, but this is, a, a very simple example. This is a two component mixture model. Um, two, two, um, it's a mixture of two normal distributions that actually have the same variance, sigma squared, but they have different um, mean values, mu one and mu, mu zero. And I've written the mixture in this way just for convenience. Um, you, c you can see that if Z is one, it selects this guy and that guy goes away. And if Z is zero, it selects this guy and that guy goes away. So it's just a way to, to write um, a, a two component mixture in a convenient form, essentially. So this is two Gaussians, different means, same variance. Um, so theta now is actually this pair of means, but I, I'm not gonna estimate the variances, I'm just gonna estimate the means. Um, and then of course the normal distribution looks like that. Okay, if we, if we assume a uniform prior on Z, which means either label is equally probable ahead of time, uh, then we can write this um, complete data, sort of standard EM style, complete data likelihood. It would be proportional to the same thing. I mean, the, having a uniform prior essentially means that uh, this is all the same except it's just proportional, but that isn't important, really. Okay, so just sort of plugging and chugging. Um, the, uh, so this is just expanding out the log of the, the, um, the log of this thing. Uh, so um, it turns out, this, tur this turns out to be, um, well, for, for one thing, conveniently, it's quadratic in the, in the mean values. Um, also, it's one of these times when the expected value can go inside, so, so here's the Z bar um, in there. So, so this is what needs to get optimized, and this really is a simple quadratic equation in the, in the means, and um, you can solve it um, pretty easily, and so it's just, what it says is that when we, when we, when we re-estimate the parameters, these two mean values, the mean value number one is, there is a convex combination of the data items um, weighted by how strongly we think they belong to class one, and mean value zero is a convex combination of the data items weighted by how much we think they belong to class zero, and that's based on on this guy, Z bar. The E step Z bar is just plugging into, um, plugging into the um, Gaussian, or the normal distribution, so it's simple. Um, and um, that's it. Um, this is from Wikipedia. This is actually more general. This is, this is doing a two component mixture model 
where it's solving in for, um, well, it's, it's for one thing, it's two dimensions. It's solving for two dimensional mean vectors and also two dimensional covariances. Um, and it's, uh, I guess this is data from Old Faithful, the geyser, and apparently, I guess it appears that um, this is the duration of uh, spouting water, I guess, and this is de the delay between spouting water, and apparently Old Faithful has a bimodal distribution in the joint space of uh, activity, duration, and delay. And so here's a, so this is the EM algorithm starting out poorly, you know, the, the initial thing has the two distributions really, you know, totally disagreeing with the data right there. And then it fairly quickly chugs along and, and uh, comes to a mixture of two Gaussians that agree pretty nicely with the data. And that's it. Um, I actually came to this uh, style um, when I was visiting Nicola's lab in, at INRIA. So it could be, it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have been visiting INRIA because I'm often so busy I don't have time to chip away at stuff like this. Anyway, that's, that's the EM algorithm. Thanks for your attention and I'm happy to take questions.